Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and as usual, I have a plugin because I come up with a plugin every week for people, and I've been doing these uh, dither plugins, of which there are a lot of them uh, getting ready to release. So you'd think I would continue doing those, but nope. I have a science project that I tried that has given some interesting results, and I'll tell you all about it. First of all, this is where it all started. This is a note paper that I have on the behavior of certain capacitors. It's a ceramic capacitors made out of barium titanate, and this is from the uh, company Murata, or Murata. And the idea is here, they acknowledge that if you have a DC voltage, a pressure on the capacitor, that's going to uh, affect its uh, value because these particular high dielectric constant capacitors drop their values radically as voltage bias goes in. But bear in mind, the signal is also a voltage. So I was thinking, what if you took the value of the DC, you know, the roll off or high pass or whatever, and modeled it as if the frequency could change. And this is not something that I can do with the bi quad filters in your modern style professional digital, but my funky filters, such as capacitor, yeah, I can do that with it. It'll work. Thing is, I've already done it with my old high pass and low pass filters, but those were symmetrical. Those took the uh, absolute value of the signal and modulated it based on how far you were away from zero. This that I'm talking about that I learned from the Murata data sheet, that's not symmetrical. That is going to cause the signal to become asymmetrical and, well, I think maybe we should go and have a look. Here is, uh, here is me in a bizarre space of space and time. Whoa. Okay, none of that. Here's logic. And I have brought up capacitor and capacitor too, because I'm going to show you the difference between these two things. The first one does not have this control non-lin in it. Non-lin defaults to zero, which is pretty chill, and cranks up to, well, you'll see here. I can play some music. Same crap as before. I'll get back into music again at some point when I can. If I turn on capacitor, it does this. If I turn on capacitor 2, now you might not have heard that the first time, so let's show you again. Again, there's capacitor. Let's call that uh, 0 0.7. 0 0.17. So that's regular capacitor right there. And the hold down option to fine tune this because it wasn't doing as fine tuned as well as I wanted. But here is capacitor 2. Now I mentioned that non-lin starts out at zero. There's a lot of weird stuff going on inside this, like gain staging and so on, because it does a strange thing, which as near as I can tell would also be the case for hardware. Like if, it, if this is the way that the capacitance reacts, hardware would be doing the same thing. And capacitors in the real world that have this effect of being driven to a lower capacitance by the pressure of voltage and being frequency modulated as a result, 
Well, check this out. Here we've got dry wet. That's what non-lin sounds like. But as I start turning it up, That's a pretty unusual effect. It turns out that if you do this, you're rearranging the signal enough that it actually peaks out a little bit more intensely, but it's kind of a dynamics expander effect. But there is no dynamics expander. All that's happening is the cutoff frequency for both the low pass and the high pass are being modulated by the pressure of voltage against it as if it was this barium titanate ceramic capacitor. And I'm not sure how much that relates to uh, like classic guitar amps and things, but one thing we can do is say, well, solo guitars. And the funky thing about this is capacitor to does not give you a perfect uh, signal path. It does not take itself out when you max it out in this way. Listen to what it's doing. We're turning nonlinear up. And there's a peakiness that enters into it. So if we divvy this up, let's call this 0 0.8 and this 0 0.1. What we get is this very exaggerated sound. And I can demonstrate that by... This is just regular capacitor. It's nothing unusual. It's not doing anything aggressive with the dynamics. It's not building up any extra peaks or anything like that. But when you frequency modulate it in this way, oh, if that was hard to miss, we'll turn it up even more. So there you have it. This is an interesting development. I wasn't really expecting it. This is a upgrade to capacitor, in other words, capacitor two, that keeps what it's got, but kind of like hypes it out, makes it bigger and more so. It also adds a little bit of boost, so you might want not to put this after like clippers and things, because you could get peaks that are too high from using it. If you have something that is absolutely maxed out and you crank non-lin way up, you're going to get massive peaks because it has that sort of funny expandy effect. But again, going back to this. Even with non-lin all the way off, we get an effect. And because of the control of the dynamics of it, there's always a slight boostiness. There's a bit of a pad in there, but then if we change it to be... Like maybe around 0 0.5. That's dry. And that is with non-lin and nothing being done on the capacitor. This is a signal chain where if you pass things through the analog model device, you get a analog model style result. And that has great significance for work that I'm going to do going forwards because there's plenty of stuff that I could do that will benefit from this technique. 
and of course if we want to just take it farther. You can get a very radical exaggerated sound. And in fact, if we go sort of full telephone effect here, we can go from a relatively plain sound, relative to a dry wet. Normally this would cut a great deal, but if we crank non-lin all the way, we get a super distort sound from just pushing it so hard. This is designed so that with stuff that's relatively full volume, you can turn on Lin up until it's real aggressive. So if you're designing it to do this, then you can also combine it with dry wet. to sort of rein it in a little bit, but also get some of that flavor of the really aggressive distortion. Or we can Now it's a bass boost, but if we were doing the bass boost with regular capacitor, it'd be kind of like this. And then if we start turning the nonlinearity, again, this is modeled after real-world capacitors. And a study that Murata did on the concerns of putting too much voltage against their capacitors, you get this. You get some extra peaking and grinding. And then if you blend that with dry, you can get all kinds of effects. So that's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with this plugin. You can use it like regular capacitor, keeping non-lin low. You can give it a little bit of non-lin for this analog flavor, this, this modeled after behaviors of real world capacitors flavor, which does a funny frequency modulation thing that boosts peak energy on you. And then you can also do like boosting stuff almost like it was air windows focus, narrowing in a band of some kind, and then cranking non-lin up because that boosts what you get out of that and then blending it with dry or wet. Or just keeping it wide open, bringing in enough non-lin so that you're getting your sort of expanded effect, leaving it at full wet and letting it act kind of like interstage or something where that is causing its own sort of analog modeling flavor which I can demonstrate in the end of this silly guitar solo while I get together other music. So this is raw. That's slightly cut back. And then if we boost it just a little bit, it's not going all crunchy on us, but this is the dry sound, and then this There you have it. These are tough times for us all. If anybody wants to hear uh, some things about uh, challenges of recent weeks and stuff for me, then drop by the question and answer thing. Um, that's going to be dedicated mostly to answering questions and such. But uh, for now, what I can tell you is that the plugin making continues full force. I still have more of those other ones that I've been doing, but uh, this interrupted that process, kind of skipped in 
and made itself apparent. And I think we're all pretty pleased about that. If you liked capacitor, this might be your lucky day because this is capacitor 2, which is just like capacitor right down to having basically the same reactions to the frequencies. But the non-lin control that's doing this analog modeling that I didn't have available to me before, I wasn't doing that in an asymmetrical way, and I certainly didn't realize that it was going to do this sort of energy and uh, transient boosting behavior. This ought to have all kinds of uses. This work is supported by Patreon. That's how I'm able to keep doing this year after year. And if you can afford to, and you would have bought this like 50 bucks or something like that if it came out, or any plugin of mine, or just whatever, I, I'm still getting people who are randomly sending money by PayPal. Not even necessarily because they think that they're buying anything in specific, just because they're like, well, I don't like Patreon, but I want to give you money by PayPal. Okay, yeah. And that keeps me going. This is what we got this week out of me doing my work. And I hope you like it. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.